So is, uh, is everybody okay with, uh, if I give the uh, talk in English, I think you are, but maybe, okay, thumbs up, okay, thank you. En français, oui, pas de problème. Ok, so, um, open flow. Um, who knows open flow? You, I, I know that you know it, but okay, cool. Some, some folks know. Okay. This uh, is a pro product that uh, comes out of future internet research and it now comes uh, maybe now, maybe in the future into your network, and I'm going to explain that. I'm Hans Jörg from NEC Labs Europe in Heidelberg, and um, I know it's me between you and lunch. But if you watch this talk, you're going to see a spaceship, a car with a jet engine, a powerful robot even twice, and a fully programmable network. So stay tuned. This we skip. NEC Labs Heidelberg is not that far away from Frankfurt. It's just one hour drive if there's no congestion on the traffic. So um, we are about 100 staff members there. We do research in the internet networking services area. So everything above layer two and a half, I would say. So we don't do hardware, but we do a lot of uh, internet uh, research, especially now uh, nowadays, machine to machine communication, cloud computing. So yes, the full stuff of things that are hip at the moment. This is not the nicest building in Heidelberg. That's just where we are. So uh, why OpenFlow? I think we all agree the internet is a great invention. Uh, but um, Houston, I think we have a problem. And here's the problem. The internet technology is uh, somehow stuck. Some people say the internet is broken. I wouldn't go that far because my phone worked this morning. But the internet protocol that forms the basis of our current communication is is a child of the 60s. I mean, we were looking all like uh, our, our, our parents looked like this guy. So, and the RC is from uh, 1981. So uh, the purpose for what the IP protocol was built is not what it's being used for now. So we have done a lot of workarounds. We have uh, added real-time communication. We have added cores. We have added security and uh, just put another patch on it and another one and another one. It's still working, it's working, it's working, but where's the innovation? I mean, we're, we're tied to this system and we only do like 5% more functionality. Um, if you doubt that, um, who's got IPv6 and turned off IPv4? Uh, nobody. This takes us all too long. So um, the other thing is, this is from our great marketing slides. We live in Cloudland now. So there's two things that we uh, see that somehow stop us from uh, being innovative from the networking side. The one thing is too many closed proprietary systems. What about if we had an open system that uh, all vendors support, but I can put my application on top and the specification of this open system is available to everybody? And the other thing is cloud age. I mean, we, we start moving virtual machines here, the data is here, and um, the IP routing must follow. And if anybody of you has ever written a 3GBP specification about IP mobility, that's a hard read. So maybe there's something wrong, and we can check if we can do something different. As I said, something's wrong, we use Existing thing, we just pimp it. This is like putting a jet engine on a 70 years uh, car. It's working, but it's maybe not that fun. So um, some people sat together and said, um, let's do something new. Let's see how we would design it from scratch. Those were the guys from uh, Stanford Clean Slate Internet Program. So it's originated in the Bay Area. And actually, they are meeting this week to, to standardize OpenFlow. So it's a child of the future internet research program. In 2008 at SIGCOM, there was this uh, paper from McEwen et al. And they were describing a new way of uh, working in networks on a per flow level, not thinking about packets anymore. Uh, how OpenFlow works. So this is back to the basics. One application A wants to talk to application B. So there will be a flow of packets, frames, whatever, and they will take a certain path. And I want to have control about the path. Anybody who worked on ATM now says, yes, I know this. Yes, this is how ATM also works, but there's more to it. OpenFlow allows you uh, to control the full path routing using a centralized controller, some godlike entity that programs your path through the network. So you don't have all those uh, nice control plane protocols where the nodes have to interwork with each other, seeing only a part of the network. Um, 
if you have a, this centralized entity, you can have like those two flows and at night time you want to save some energy or you have downtime of some nodes in between, you can just uh, move the flow uh, over the other nodes by uh, installing new rules on each switch. So what each switch gets installed is a rule how to classify a packet and map it to a flow and then where to send out and possibly do some actions. Um, the other thing that uh, you can do is if you have such a flow like this one and you want to put a stateful firewall in here, so you just loop the traffic. That's pretty easy if you have a central controller. You can just insert a local breakout here and loop the packet back. And here you can put some fun things in, into the network. Um, this is, uh, again, one slide saying OpenFlow has a centralized uh, controller. This is this unified controller and actually OpenFlow is a protocol between the controller and a simplified switch. So we call it, I, I must be really careful that I fall down here. You will have some fun, but maybe I move here again. Um, the switch itself is dumb. It gets the instruction from daddy or his boss. So that allows in principle to make very basic switches here and put all the intelligence into the controller. And the cool thing about this is that um, you can put applications into the controller or on top of the controller. So you want to do some fancy routing stuff for your network, you can program it yourself. So that's what I say, uh, regain full control over the network. Here's how it works uh, uh, from the switch point of view. So um, this is the switch and it has flow tables. So it has, a, um, has certain rules for flows. So a packet comes into the switch Okay, let's say like this, I have just booted up the switch. The switch doesn't know anything. So it just knows that, um, okay, there's my controller, this is daddy, I need to ask daddy. So a packet comes in, DHCP request. It gets it, it doesn't have a rule for this. So it takes the packet, encapsulated it in open flow, sends it to the controller and the controller says, yeah, DHCP, you have to uh, send it there. Okay, you got your rule, you can forward it. Same thing can happen with any type of uh, flows that you categorize by, um, with the IP headers, or not the IP headers, the headers of the frame. So here you have a list of rules, and then your network is, um, you, you can create your own virtual network topology with that. Here's uh, some fun things that you can do with it. Like uh, this is again the switch, you have uh, N flows, so you have a matching rule, so you take the frame as it is, and uh, you look at some characteristics of this frame, then you have classified it, then you have an action that can be dropped forward to port 11, um, put an MPLS label on top, whatever, and you can also do some statistics. So uh, here's some examples of actions, unicast, so A wants to talk to B, you just program a flow. Multicast, if you don't want to use what Carsten presented, you can program it yourself. Maybe it's not that easy, but you can do. You can do your own multicast. You can do multipath. You can uh, insert waypoints in the network by programming the logic on top of the controller. Here's uh, the flow switching definition. This is, I mean, this is the frame. It comes in, and uh, OpenFlow version 1.0 can look at the headers. And here's the, uh, the fields that are supported by the first version of OpenFlow. And believe me, they are, they are expanding it to also cover MPLS headers and for sure IPv6. I mean, you don't want to deploy something that's not V6 capable. So here you can see the ingress port, Ethernet MAC addresses, Ethernet types, goes up to IP. Um, this whole uh, matching and the OpenFlow protocol is specified by the Open Networking Foundation. So there is an industry fora in place that's going to standardize it, put it on uh, accessible websites so you can take the specification, run to your vendor and say, I want to have this and you can test uh, if the implementation is uh, fulfilling the specs. Important thing about OpenFlow is the world is flat. Forget about spanning tree, forget about anything that's working on Ethernet level. I mean, you know how long it took us to take Ethernet that was designed for local area network to make it compliant to run in wide area networks. We had to turn off all the fancy features of Ethernet basically and do tunneling again. So in OpenFlow, the world is flat. I get a frame, I look at it, and I decide what to do with it, where to forward it. I can have really spaghetti routing. You can have a route per flow on a very fine granular level. I don't recommend that, but you could do. This I skipped, this is just mapping examples. So here's, uh, here's the whole story again. 
it make, gives you a fully programmable network. So it's a, OpenFlow is a standard interface between the network and the controller. The users can add their apps. I mean, everybody's talking about apps. Even that can be apps. Yeah, you can add a plugin. You can build your own small company that develops one plugin for the controller that does a really fancy thing. Um, and you don't need changes in the network unless you want to uh, pimp up the, the bandwidth. If you want to have a new feature, I mean, what do you do? You have probably dual vendors. You want to have a, a new feature, maybe some BGP extensions that's just about to be standardized in ITF. You go to vendor A and you go to vendor B. And then they say, yeah, use our roadmap, maybe in five years, maybe in three years, and then it doesn't work together. So um, with this, you can program it yourself. You just have your vendors implement OpenFlow. For sure, everything's better, faster, cheaper, but it's really faster in a sense that, especially if you, if you don't run the network of Deutsche Telekom and you have a, a bit faster times to uh, bring new ideas into the network, uh, then you can be really faster by just programming things yourself. You don't need hardware upgrades to buy new functionality because you can also program yourself. Less risk depends on how you do it, but you can, uh, you can test before you deploy it. And it, this is why the research com community really jumped on that. It feeds innovation. If you have any weird idea how routing in the future should look like, get an open flow switch and program it yourself and see how it works. So, um, talked a lot about research. This is not a future vision, it's available. Not only from NEC, but I think we have some good stuff around. So this is some screenshots from our programmable flow controller where you can uh, move virtual machines around and uh, have your topology of the switches and you can configure it. This is, uh, if somebody can, can read that from there, it's, he's lying. And this is screenshots we just did um, yesterday. It's just showing the characteristic of a flow and a match. So there's a CLI on the switches. Mm -hmm. And what's really important, if you want to deploy it, you need to have a standard you can rely on. You need to have a standard that you can put into RFIs, that you can do interop tests against. And that's why a lot of uh, companies teamed up to the Open Networking Foundation. And here you see um, uh, the, the founding members, the board members are Deutsche Telekom. They are really active in that, and we are collaborating them, with them also in research projects, Microsoft, Facebook, Verizon, Google, Yahoo. And uh, here's... Here's the vendors that have to follow then. So, so they are defining the standard. Um, what am I supposed to do with that? Two examples. Data sender. I'm not really the data sender expert, but Pierre is sitting here, and you can ask him if you have some more specific questions about it. I mean, this is what I learned, what the typical data sender setup is. It's hierarchical, and in many cases, you, if this guy wants to talk to that guy, Maybe the, the frame goes over the top tier switches. Maybe you don't want that. So network is quite complex. And, uh, and it's hierarchical because you still want to keep everything under control. How about, um, so that's one of the issues with data centers. Resource management is another one. If you want to uh, put a machine A here, maybe how about the traffic? It's, it's taking the traffic with it. So how do you control that? Especially when you, yeah, virtual machine migration and service provisioning. So there's many devices from different vendors. How, how am I going to do this? So uh, in one of our research projects, we developed a data center planning tool. And this is really barely readable where you could uh, set up uh, which services you have, which communication patterns you have, and then it calculates the path and optimizes your data center. The next thing, um, broadband access. Broadband access relies on tunneling still. So you have, uh, you have your home gateways, you have your DSLAM or your LTE base station, you have aggregation networks, then you have somewhere this uh, IP edge, which could be the uh, P gateway or the BRAS in the fixed line network, and you have tunnels there. So this is, I mean, PPP survived. It came from dial-up and it's still around. And PPP over Ethernet is being now expanded to V6 and it's still there and it's going to stay. So um, here we have tunnels. Maybe that's not the coolest thing because this network is not really subscriber or service aware. If you want to do that, if you can um, treat the, the traffic here per flow, per user, which you can do in open flow, you can have your, uh, let's say, local breakouts. You can have your CDN here, and you can extract only a fraction of the traffic of this tunnel and just do the routing across the corner and break it out locally. Same you could do with voice over IP. Gaming people, they, they like to have their services here, so put the cloud service closer to the user. There's many use cases where you need to do that. Um, yeah, try to do that with Ethernet and MPLS. 
Um, one thing, um, there's a lot of research going on, and this is shameless advertising for a European research project where we are, and this is called Ophelia. Ophelia's goal is to set up a pan-European testbed where everybody can do open flow-based experiments on a network that spans across Europe. It started last year, and it has eight sites now, and it has a central hub in Ghent where, uh, at IBBT. And um, what you can do already, if you uh, sign up to the terms and condition, you can get a slice of the network so it gets virtualized, and you can uh, program your own open flow extension, and you can, as a VPN, you, you get your part of the network, you get some virtual machines, you can run nice experiments. And um, yeah, current state is that the islands are up and running and the interconnection is going to come soon. And um, there's a lot of uh, research um, uh, organizations in, and there's also Deutsche Telekom as one of the main drivers in. If you're interested in that, I, I have put some flyers there to this desk, if, you, if you're interested, or, or just contact me during the day. Basically, what, what is done there, you have open flow controllers, and you have the open flow switches, and you put an intermediate layer in between which is called the flow visor. This is a middleware. And there on top, you can put your own open flow controller and the flow visor makes sure that you only see your slice, that you don't spoil the other slices, and, uh, and so on. And you can have a, you have a management system on top where you can create your own slice. Um, yeah, and there's open calls for doing experiments and for joining the project. So I really speed up. I mean, it's, uh, lunch is pretty close. It's, yeah. Um, now comes the marketing slide. Our vision is um, OpenFlow re-enables innovation on the networks because it's all in your hands. I mean, you can do a lot of nasty things. You need to be very careful. I mean, I'm not saying um, that you should cache every single flow in the network. That would just kill you. But you need to have good engineering there. You can have bring in good ideas. You can use uh, open source controllers to control your devices. Like uh, one popular thing is the Knox controller or the Tremor, which was developed by my company. And you can just add in your stuff using Python or C code, as easy as that. So it enables, uh, maybe it gives a bit uh, of, a, of a new push to the networking guys, because the innovation, believe it or not, is, it's coming from the services guys. It's coming from the app developers at the moment. And all the network providers say, my revenues are going down. Where's my new field? Maybe there's some space in where you can add innovation into your network again. For sure, it's going to save us all. OK, that was my last but one slide. And I have some um, links where you can uh, look up some more stuff on the internet. You can also, I'm, I'm here the whole day. You can talk to me. Um, this one I really recommend is a really funny video, a promotion video about OpenFlow. Here's the Ophelia testbed video. And um, also, um, we have a local website just uh, turned on in the last days from NEC Labs Heidelberg about OpenFlow. So much about that. Thanks for your attention. OK, thanks a lot. Are there any questions? The controllers themselves? They, you mean in this tiered architecture? What's the protocol? Is there some routing protocol between the, the controllers, like no. BGP or something? No, no, there's the, 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 there's the controller, and the controller talks to the switches southbound. There's okay. no protocol specified to interconnect but you're controlling Your service provider, you're controlling your own controller. I'm another service provider controlling my own controller. How do I exchange data between them? And you mean if you want to interconnect data? them? Yeah. That's not defined yet. Okay. You can, uh, what, what you can do is you can do it. I mean, I'm not saying uh, turn off the old internet and do the new one. So it has to go in steps. So what's going to happen probably is people will deploy it in their data centers. And you know, OpenFlow is flat. It doesn't care about headers. But on the edges to other networks, you need to have the right headers. You need to have the MAC addresses again. You need to have the MPLS labels. So we we'll start with interconnection on user plane level. And one of the next steps is for sure, if you want to have interconnection, you need to, in, need to interconnect the controller. <laughs> In the first slide, you talked about end-to-end uh, -end connect, end-to-end -end control. Yeah, yeah. And that's I mean, the ultimate. Vision we, we live in the internet, so we we live between different service providers. So there should be some hierarchy. Yes, that's, that's that's a valid point. That needs to be developed. Currently, it works if it's your network. Okay. No, I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks. Okay. Are there any more questions? Okay then, thanks a lot Hans-Jörg.